you go on, you do an MBA. Is that, did you go directly after graduating undergrad? No. So after undergrad, and I, and I studied abroad again during undergrad for a summer. I went Arrest. to Spain. In Spain? And then I went to Spain, kicked it in this beach town, studied Spanish for a summer. Um, after college, that same mentor, um, I was telling her, um, I want to travel some more, and I don't really want to go jump into, some, into a, like a job. I think I'm more want to start a business or something. And uh, she was like, you could go to China. I hear there's a lot of stuff popping off in China. And this is like, you know, this is like 2003, 2004. And this is like really when China was just starting to like bubble. Um, and so I ended up going to China and teaching English over there. Okay. And so you, I would teach English for like four hours out the day. Um, and then I was just, I was just in China. And so I did that for a year and China is really when my hustle was just completely ignited. Right. So, um, I had always been sort of a, you know, like I always had like a hustle going for something. Um, but when I got to China, I was just surrounded by um, opportunity and, and everybody in China is a hustler. Like everybody in China got something for sale. Paint the picture and, for me, give me an idea. Okay, well look, like China is where everything is, is made, right? It's, it's the factory and the wholesale depot for the entire world. Right, so you get there and everybody has something for sale. I mean, anything you could possibly think of. Light bulbs, uh, toothpicks, plastic baggies, toothbrushes, you know, furniture, you know, like everything that's in your house, there's a factory in China that, may, that, that makes the shit. Correct. And so, um, you know, and so I get out there and Everyone that works there is, is um, everyone around you is somehow connected to international trade. And so I just start seeing stuff for sale that's cheap. And so one of the first things that I got, I got drawn to was uh, I had some friends out there. I had found this small group of other like, like black dudes out there couple of them were like military or whatever and they were buying uh Jordans mm -hmm. and sending them back home and I was like Jordan yo, yo, Jordans because I know a lot of people want some Jordans <laughs> and so hold on were these real Jordans or bootleg Jordans what you think <laughs> 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 what you think, man? <laughs> what you think, right? So I got on that, and and you know I hit the guys back home, and I was like, "Yo, I'm about to just start sending y'all all these J's, and y'all move on, send me the money." And that was how I got started in understanding international trade, and I had to understand how to go to different factories. I had to understand how to ship stuff. I had to learn about customs. I had to learn about moving money, uh, you know, cross border. Um, I, I learned a lot of Chinese doing it. Um, and, um, and then that just like, as that grew, you know, I wanted more and I wanted to do something that was, you know, a little bit, you know, more legitimate. And, you know, I wanted to do, I, I started seeing a vision of something much bigger. Um, How long were you in China? Uh, I was in China for about a year and a half. So within a year and a half, you go down there, you're teaching. Four hours a day, you're teaching. During your off time, some of your friends, they have a small time hustle sending Jays back to the States. And yeah. this is what ignited, whoa, I am literally in a place that makes everything. 
I'm, I was I was sitting I was at the I was the plug. I was there like, you go. Oh, shit, this you go. is the plug. I'm sitting at, at the middle of the source of everything, right? And so I just got juiced, and that that just like lit me up, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna be the plug. And uh, I started with the Jays, and I ended up after like a year and a half. I moved back to to the states. I actually moved to Miami for a while, and um, you know, and I would I would go back and forth every now and then back to California or whatever, and I would always bring some J's with me. I would just have a suitcase. I would put them in the trunk, and I would just pull up to the barber shop or I'd pull up to the gas station, and I would sell sell sneakers. Um, and uh, but I had been like stacking bread to go bigger and I ended up getting into furniture and then I started moving like these containers of furniture and art back to Miami and I got a warehouse and I started uh putting ads online on Craigslist and I and I got a condo in Miami that was literally it was like a showroom but I lived in it it was like a showroom for furniture, but I lived in it. And, I, and I, I would put the couches together and sleep on them at night. And then I would wake up, separate it all out, and I would have people coming through looking at the, looking at the furniture. And then I had a warehouse where we would go get it delivered from. And I would just take, just take cash, you know, on the spot. So, um, and I just did that. I was just, you know, I was still just kind of hustling. Um, you know, stacking Did you flip. Pay your bills at the time, or do you have a day job? No, I never had a day job. So this, this, all, this yeah. hustle is actually paying your bills. Yeah, I mean, I was making. I like. I mean, the furniture. I mean, I, I was making six figures from shoes, and then, you know, multiple six figures from furniture. Like I would just, I was getting, you know, containers of furniture that I would import and I had an entire warehouse and I just sold stuff like cash just off Craigslist. And I still at that point really didn't have like a sophisticated enough vision. Mm -hmm. Like I, the way I look at it now is I would, you know, there's, um, there's hustling and then there's business and Business is, is, you know, when you cross that threshold from hustling to business, there's more of a plan. There's more of a long range goal. There's more of a structure to it. Um, and I was still in that mode. And I'm like, I was like 24 years old and just like spending all my money in Miami and just having fun. Um, but that's when I started to really, you know, I started to understand, um, that there was a lot that I did not understand, mm -hmm. right? And so I had I had started to meet people who had real businesses, and you know they were multi millionaires and and had um, had corporations. And I remember I was, I was sitting at a um, I was sitting at Bayside in Miami with one of my friends, and he he was a currency trader, and he was asking me about my stuff in international trade. He was really fascinated. And I was saying, yo, like trade makes the world go round. Goods make the world go round. And he said, he said, yeah, he said, but nah, you know who really makes the world go round? And he just pointed up and I looked up and it was a Bank of America building. And I really had an epiphany at that moment that I don't, that's where the money moves. And I want to know who's in that building and I want to know what they're talking about mm -hmm. at the top. I want to know the business of money, not just the products and the goods. Um, and that really changed my mindset and made me start thinking like, okay, I want to go back to, I want to go get an MBA because I want to know who's in that room and I want to know what they're talking about. So it was that moment that changed your mindset completely. It really was.
What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.